Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ross and Buff Carlin with another program of Greater Than a Higher Power. And basically, uh, I was reading the scriptures this morning and something just jumped out at me. And let me get my Bible here and just my glasses and I'll read it to you. From, from John, the Gospel of John chapter 1. This is when Jesus was gathering some new disciples. And it says uh, that Philip, in verse 45 of chapter 1 uh, through 51, it says, And Philip found Nathanael, said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said to him, behold, an Israelite in whom uh, is no guile or deceit. And Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And then in verse 51 it says, And he said to him, Most assuredly I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven, the heavens open, and the angel Angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of God. So he said that the heavens are going to open. And that's a whole other message about open heavens. I may speak on that sometime. But in verse 50 here, he said to you, you will see greater things than these. So basically, Jesus had a word of knowledge about him. You know, and said, here's a person that has no guile, no deceit, or Nathaniel. And it got his attention, and then it, and it led him to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the Living God. I mean, there's supernatural things happening in the Lord, but he said greater things. He says, "You shall see greater things than these, greater things." And that's what's just what came to my spirit this morning. I just said, "Wow, God has greater things." Greater things for all of us. He has greater things for us. And I and I want to talk about, you know, believe in God for greater things. You know, and I believe as, as the Lord said that specifically to Nathaniel, but it can also apply to us by faith if we'll receive it, that greater things, we'll see, see greater things happening. And I believe God's getting ready to pour out a lot of uh, healings and miracles and things are going to happen to display the army of God. Now, I just want to remind you, I did write a book called Greater Than a Higher Power, and the subtitle is Addiction Recovery Yesterday, Today, and Forever by me, Dr. Ross and Buff Carlin, and you can get the book uh, from Amazon Books, or, or you can probably also, I think I have a website called Greater Than a Higher Power. You can probably order it there also. All right, and for those that don't know me, uh, to make a long story short, I went through a program. I had an alcohol drug problem. I got involved in a bunch of crime and delinquency and all that stuff. And I left home when I was 15, hung around a bunch of older guys who'd been in prison. And I got in trouble myself and all that. But doing drugs, selling drugs, all those kind of things that I did before. And I had my share of problems. But I was introduced to Jesus Christ where I really got to know him. Uh, when I was 19 years old and dur during that time actually I had people it's a long story which I won't, won't get into now but people pray prayed for me and basically did an exorcism over me cast out devils I was a pretty mean guy before I knew Jesus but I was mixed up in alcohol and drugs I went through a program called Teen Challenge I went to one in Pennsylvania Teen Challenge was started by Dave Wilkerson and, and his brother Don his brother Don also uh, wrote the forward to my book. And uh, anyways, 
so, so I went through all that. I worked for Teen Challenges for different one. The last one I was at was in uh, Louisiana. I was executive director of Louisiana Teen Challenge. We had three facilities at the time. So anyways, I'm very familiar with Teen Challenge and seeing people get set free by the power of God from addictions. And uh, I'm just used to seeing people make it and do great, get their lives changed because of God. And that's one of the things I bring out about this book. Why I say, that's why I say greater than a higher power. And, you know, 12 steps do a lot of good things. Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, groups like that, help a lot of people. But, some, you know, it also says the God of your understanding. And I think it's important to understand who the Lord of Lords is, who the King of Kings is, the one who's able to, to minister to you, set you free. Now, I am a licensed clinical addiction specialist in North Carolina and also a certified uh, clinical supervisor for addiction counselors and a master addiction counselor and a whole bunch of other things. I'm also a licensed clinical mental health counselor supervisor. So I have, uh, you know, basically credentials, licenses to help people with through counseling. And there's a lot of people who have mental health issues and about half people with alcohol and drug problems, serious problems with addictions also have some kind of mental health disorder, anxiety or depression or something else like that. So anyways, I, that's a little bit about me. And my heart's desire is to see people free from addictions, to get free. And you can be free. Uh, the Lord set me free when I was 19 years old. That was a long time ago. And he set me free, gave me a new life. I've never had a slip or a relapse in decades. God has been good to me. But I want to talk to you about this subject of uh, uh, believing God for greater things. All right. I have my computer right here. I wrote out some notes and uh, so I might be looking over at that sometimes, but hopefully you understand that. Uh, in Exodus chapter 18, verse 11, it says, now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods for in the thing wherein they do up proudly, he was above them. God's above all. As a matter of fact, in, in, uh, also, remember when Moses with his brother Aaron went into Egypt and talked to Pharaoh and basically said, let my people go. The Israelite people said, let them go. And he refused to do it. And there was a bunch of plagues and different things that happened. Well, one of the things that happened, I actually happened to just remind I look into the book and talk about that just briefly. But what, what happened here is, to make a long story short, but basically, uh, when Moses and Aaron were there, um, his Aaron had a rod, you know, a staff, a rod, and he threw it down. And when it came to the ground, it turned into a serpent right in front of Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh called his magicians, and they threw down their staffs. And they also turned into serpents. So at that point, it looked like, well, that's, you know, these magicians are just as powerful as God working through Aaron and Moses. But if you really look what the scriptures, it says then that uh, Aaron's uh, serpent swallowed up all the other ones. <laughs> so on the surface, it seems like some things are as, are as powerful as God, but it's not. They're not. God Almighty is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He's the mighty God. And so there's many scriptures in the Bible that talks about that. In the Old Testament, they had the prophets of Baal, which were false, you know, false prophets, and it was an idol. And many, many people were, they were undecided. Who should they serve, God or Baal? And God sent Elijah, Elijah the prophet, and had a showdown with him. And make a, and basically what happened is, uh, the, the all these prophets of Baal got there and were crying out to to Baal to help them and all that stuff and and nothing happened and actually Elijah's kind of mocking them so well maybe he's on a vacation or something or maybe he's taking a nap or whatever he doesn't hear you and this went on for a long time and but nothing happened all right and then when it was uh, Elijah's turn 
he basically, he set up an altar with a sacrifice. And when he did that, he actually, they poured water on it. And there was, there was a water shortage. But he, he poured water all over it. And he called upon God. And then God came and consumed the altar, the sacrifice. And then the people, when they saw this, all the crowd of people watching around, they cried out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. They recognized. And I am here to tell you that God is a powerful God. There's nobody can deliver like him. You probably heard about the three Hebrew children, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel that ended up, uh, they wouldn't bow down to an idol of King Nebuchadnezzar, his, his image. But what happened? They refused to do it. But what happened? They got thrown into a fiery furnace and they didn't even get burned up. They didn't even have the smell of smoke of them. And, and, and it basically says there's another one in there. Probably Jesus, you know, it, it basically was in there with them. It says one that looked like the son of God. And then the, the King Nebuchadnezzar had him taken out and he recognized, wow, the Lord really is God. There's none like him. And, and he actually said these words in the, in the book of Daniel. There's no other God that can deliver after this sort. And I am telling you, there's no other God that can deliver after this sort. And so, I mean, we can believe God for greater things, that things are going to get better. Things are going to improve. And I believe that that's a word for now and for 2022, that greater things are going to happen, just like he said to Nathaniel greater things. So I want you to expect greater things. If you have a problem with addiction, whether it's some kind whether it's alcohol or drugs or, or uh, I don't know, pornography or, or uh, any other kind of addiction, a gambling addiction, whatever the addiction may be, I am telling you that the Lord can set you free. This could be your time today. The Lord God Almighty can show you great things and you'll and you'll see greater things happen in your life. Things will be much better once you get free from your addictive behaviors. God is a good God. So he does it. He does it over and over again. He's done it for me and I know many, many, many others who have received Christ into life and the the the, the power of addiction has been broken in their lives. So and I guess I could read some more stories, but there's all kinds of them. Paul, the Apostle Paul also went to uh, uh, Athens in the book of Acts, and he saw a bunch of idols, and he got, and then he just uh, got there on Mars Hill and preached a message, basically about because he saw uh, an inscription that said unto the unknown God. And he said, "Let me ex tell you who the un unknown God is," and he preached Jesus Christ to him. A lot of people don't know how good God is or how powerful he is. He is able to do exceedingly above what we ask or think. And he can do greater things than any, any other person in the world. There's none like him, you know, or even in the whole universe. He's the one who made us and put us all together. So I want you to believe God for greater things. You know, that in other words, you don't have to be stuck in your addiction forever with all the problems that happen out of it, whether it's legal problems or health, physical health problems, mental health problems, relationship problems, or whatever it may be. I am telling you, God is greater than any addiction and he can break that bondage in your life. And so I encourage you, if you have a problem with addiction, you call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you'll see greater things happen in your life, good things, wonderful things, if you'll turn your life over to the Lord. All right, so that's important to know. All right, and then also here in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 38 says, how God basically, and it's many scriptures here, and I can't, I'm not going to read them all, but basically tells them, uh, the, the children of Israel after Moses uh, led them out of Egypt, and they went through the Red Sea and all that stuff, and that God has taken them to the promised land, to Canaan, the land that flowed with milk and honey and all that stuff, and many different times, he says, I'm taking to a land with people who are greater and mightier than you. 
I mean, they were going to be way outnumbered, but the Lord told them to go in and he would be with them and bless them and help them to get rid of these people who were involved in pagan practices. And so that's what it's about. And this this is uh, just one of the verses like that. But Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28 says, Whither shall we go? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts. They got discouraged, saying, The people is greater and, and taller than we are. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of uh, Anakin there, those the giants. You know, there's, there's big giants over there. And it's it's like when they're giants, and matter of fact, in the book of Exodus, it talks about um, Moses sent uh, spies over there, 12 spies, one leader from each of the 12 tribes of of Israel and had them check out the land and see if it really was good and, you know, bring back some grapes or whatever, bring back to show us. And they did. And they went and came back, but 10 out of those 12 people said, we're not able to do this. We can't do it. We can't do it. You know, because there's, you know, yes, it's a great land. It's wonderful, but there's too many people that are big and there's giants over there, except for Joshua and Kayla. They said we are well able. So that's what it's talking about here. So where are we going to go? Our brethren have discouraged us. Some people would discourage us and try to say, nah, it's not going to get any better. You can't get free. But I'm here to tell you, you can be free and you will be free. If you call upon the name of the Lord, he will set you free. And in my book, I give all kinds of guidance on how through Christ to overcome addictions, things to help you get equipped so that you can do it and get the right mindset and believe God. So there are many scriptures like that, like Deuteronomy uh, 4.38 says, Drive out the nations before thee greater and mightier than you are to bring to bring thee in and give you their land and inheritance as it is this day. We have an inheritance. We have a mighty inheritance. We have great things God has for us. He wants to experience the Bible talks about he wants us to, to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And you can't experience a lot of goodness if you're if you're bound up in addictions and you're tormented, you know, and it, it just won't work. But I am telling you, God's going to set you free and you're going to see greater days ahead, better things to happen. Now, I'm not going to read all these scriptures. Just a, There's just a whole lot of verses in the Bible about God just saying, hey, I'm going to take you in and you're going to conquer all kinds of people who uh, are greater in number than you. And some of them physically bigger and all that stuff. And you're and you're going to be able to do it. And so, but there are some people who just be like, man, I just can't overcome this addiction. They try. As a matter of fact, that's one of the criteria in the DSM-5, which is a Diagnostic a Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, which includes substance use disorders. One of the criteria is, you know, for having uh, uh, basically a substance use disorder, it's called now, is that, pe that people try to quit, try to cut down and are not able to do it. But I'm here to tell you greater days are ahead for, uh, ahead for you and you can and you will be free. So I want to encourage you to do that. You know, there's we God wants us to get stronger and stronger. Even David, remember he killed Goliath and later on became the king himself. And in Chronicles uh, chapter 11, verse, first Chronicles chapter 11, verse 9, it says, so David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. The Lord of hosts. And that actually host means armies. The Lord of the armies. We The Bible says that we have a spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness, wit, uh, uh, wickedness in high places. Well, I got so many verses. I see, man, our time is going so quick in this half-hour program. All right. Uh, and, and actually, the Lord said this. Jesus, when he was on this earth, in John chapter 14, verse 12, he said, Verily, verily. In other words, truly, truly. But he said it two times in a row to emphasize it. I want to emphasize you verily, verily, truly, truly. I say unto you, he that believes on me, 
The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Greater works. God wants us to believe for greater things. Greater things. And God can use us. And I have prayed with people, and I've seen healings and miracles manifested. Why? Because God confirms his word with signs following. He can and will free you. I remember in, in Dave Wilkerson, one of his early books called The Cross of Swiss Blade, he worked with a lot of gangs in New York. And what he did was he had people coming to him who got addicted to heroin. And many of them, not all of them, but many of them he prayed for, and they didn't even go through the cold turkey withdrawals. I'm talking about miracle. We have a miracle working God, and I believe that God has greater works available for us. If we'll believe him, we'll trust him. And I have prayed with people and seen that I have to go through uh, withdrawals either. All right. Uh, but Bible, Bible tells us this. In 1 John 4.4, 4, it says, You are of God, little children. I have overcome come and have overcome them because greater is he who's in you than he's in the world. Greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in the world. And that's so important to know. I mean, it, it's a long story, but I used to kind of have uh, some spiritual attacks in my new walk with the Lord when I was at Teen Challenge. You know, previous to that, I won't go all into it, but I did a lot of LSD trips and I was seeing devils and demons and you know, it was scary. I had some good trips before all that stuff, but I had, uh, I would go, I had three roommates at, at Teen Challenge and all three of them used to be heroin addicts, but not me. But I go to bed at night and I just sense an evil presence. I looked down at the feet of my bed. I just saw like a black mist and I just felt like it was some kind of satanic being or something was there. But you know what? Uh, when I learned this scripture, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he who's in you than he's in the world. I think, wait a minute. I got Jesus in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. So and he's greater. So I just went to sleep. And I said, hey, if you want to stare at me all night, you can. But I'm going to sleep. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And greater is he. So you need to know that God is greater than any kind of problems that you may be thinking about. All right. And I, I got so much here to say about it, and it, so many scriptures, but I have to choose wisely uh, which ones to share with you because this thing is, the time is ticking away quickly. But I'm here to tell you, greater things are ahead for you, wonderful things, a great future and a hope is yours. All right. Uh, so the Lord God, you know, gets greater and greater and, uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7, it says, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or disheartened because, and he's talking about the king of Assyria who gathered against them. Because the one who is with you is greater than those, than the one with you. Now, I mean, that's a physical army, but I am telling you, we're in a spiritual warfare and the Lord is greater. He is greater and he's, he's with you. He's available. He loves you. And he, you're going to see great, wonderful things happen. As you trust God, you are going to get free from addictions for once in your life. It's going to be something in the past because the Lord will set you free. And the Bible says whom the son, S-O-N, says free is free indeed. All right. Uh, and there's m many other scriptures about how God is greater than all the other gods or idols and things like that. You know, uh, even in Haggai chapter 2, verse 9, it says the glory of this present house is talking about the temple that was will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. You know, and in this place, I'm going to grant peace. I'm talking about things are going to be better and greater. They rebuild the temple. And it was greater and bigger and better and all that kind of thing. And your life is going to be built upon Jesus Christ, a solid rock, and you are going to have a life that's greater and better. The Bible says that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Jesus said he came to give life and life more abundantly, and it's yours for the asking. All right. So it's important to understand that and to trust the Lord and call upon him. See, some people don't, don't understand it, don't know it, and don't believe it. One time, I was in Cleveland, Ohio, 
And uh, I worked for Teen Challenge and I also did prison ministry for seven years and also in county jails too, besides big prisons and workhouses and whatever. And one time I went over, I, I was leaving Teen Challenge, which is on the west side of Cleveland on Lorraine Avenue, went across the Carnegie Bridge, if anybody's familiar with that area. And, but when I was leaving, this guy said, where, you know, where are you going? I told him where I was going and. And he said, well, hey, will you take me to the methadone clinic? Because it wasn't that far from the jail. And I said, okay. So I gave him a ride. And he said, will you pick me up when you're done? I said, all right, I might be a couple hours, but I'll come. Anyways, I went back by the methadone clinic to pick him up, and I couldn't find him. I, I went, I asked for him. Another guy said, you know, uh, he said the other guy's name. I don't want to say his name, but anyways. He said, like, you looking for Jimmy? He said, yeah. And he said, well, he's he's not here. I said, I was supposed to give him a ride back to the west side. He said, hey, I need a ride. Will you give me a ride? And I said, okay. So I took him. And as I, you know, as I take him, I start telling him about Jesus, you know. And, you know, he, you know, he didn't know what to expect. I mean, I got a black leather jacket on now. Then I had a black leather pants on, you know. And I'm a little bit different, you know. But I'm talking to him about the Lord, and I, I look, and I saw uh, out of his long sleeve shirt, I, I saw something p poking out, which was an ice pick. And I said, what's that for? Oh, and then he said, well, he said, that's because I've been stabbed, and I've been shot. And he showed me different scars, lift up his shirt, his leg, or whatever, and talked about all things he was going through. But And 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 he's been, of course, a heroin addict and is getting methadone. And I said, hey, if you want, I'm going to Teen Challenge. I can have you talk to one of our staff. They're a friend of mine who's actually named Jose, Jose Marrero, who was, uh, happened to be also uh, uh, Puerto Rican, like this gentleman was. And, and I said, well, you know, and he used to be a heroin addict. I said, come on, yeah, I'd like you to meet him. So they went in, they talked. And when he was done talking, he came out into the car, gave him a ride to his house. And, and you know what? He got tears in his eyes. He said, thanks. He said, I didn't think anybody cared. I didn't think anybody could be free. I've never, ever met anybody who could be free before from heroin or methadone. But I want to tell you, he met Jose, and he started to believe and realize, oh, wow, it can't happen. Goodness sakes, I see my time is going so quick, so I don't have time to read some of these. But anyways, we're going to have, it's going to be greater than your past. It's going to be greater than, greater than. You can have a greater than than what you can imagine if you really call upon the Lord, all right? So God is increasing his favor today. He wants to amaze us with his goodness and the favor on our lives, you know? And it can supersede anything we've seen in the past. The scripture talks about how the glory of the latter days will be better than the former days, and it's going to be better. Your days are going to get better. So a blessing and favor are yours, and expect great things. And goodness, our time's up already. Heavenly Father, I pray for each one listening to my voice right now that you bless them, encourage them, strengthen them, help them to realize that greater things are ahead as they look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, blessings.